Hello, Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. wanted to make a few comments today on the comments that I've been receiving on my YouTube channel. Uh, I've received a lot of comments. I appreciate all of you who have taken the time to share your ideas with me and with others. And a lot of the, the comments have been very uh, educational for me. I'm still in the learning process. There are people out there that know more about 3D printing than I'll ever know. Uh, but I do like the fact that I learn something new every day. If it's not from my own mistakes and uh, working with the, the printers and so forth, it's uh, from people like you that have taken the time to uh, share ideas. Uh, some of the, uh, the comments have prompted me to uh, do some videos and uh, have prompted me to look at making future videos to address some of those uh, comments. The, one of the comments uh, that I've received multiple times has been, uh, why aren't you selling your product now and the reason for that is that I can doing everything myself I have a pace that I'm trying to work at and I can only do so much at one time um, it takes time to set up the business design the parts if you noticed in my recent videos I'm still testing and test printing different combinations, different types of parts on different printers with or without glass bed and so forth and finding the best combinations so that when I get this secondary print farm going uh, I expect those printers to go wide open and run continuously in producing parts. Uh, the other thing is that I've had to uh, apply for patents for some of the products I've been making. I've had to set up a, an LLC, a limited liability company. I've had to set up a bank account for New Tech Inventors, uh, get a domain name for New Tech Inventors, and I'm currently working with a web designer to create a website for New Tech Inventors where I will be able to sell product uh, directly um, from that that website and it will still uh, be probably a couple months before I'll be at the point where I'll have that website in place I'll have my packaging and shipping um, all worked out I still have to work with um, and for any of you thinking about doing this listen to what I'm saying because there is a lot involved but you just have to go through it one step at a time. I've taken the products and I've come up with the box sizes, purchased those, um, put the parts in the boxes with the packaging, and I'm in the process now where I have to take those to FedEx, UPS, the post office, and find out um, what the most economical uh, shipping method is for shipping that size box and weight uh, of the products so I'll have some idea of how much shipping cost is going to be involved. So a lot of things like that. Uh, so that's one reason that I'm not just making 20 parts and then throwing them out there for sale. Uh, once I start selling, I've, there's a lot involved in keeping up with that, keeping up with orders and uh, shipping and so forth. And I don't want to be doing that when I'm still trying to build a print farm to make uh, mass uh, quantities of parts. Uh, so I've, I've got to get that finished and all of these other loose ends and I think we're getting very close. We've done a lot in the past year. So, 
if you go back and look at some of the older videos, uh, you'll see how far we've come just since the first video uh, last August. Now, um, another comment that I've had has been on um, nozzle size. Going to uh, a larger instead of a, you know, go, going from instead of from a four to maybe a six or an eight, um, 0.8 millimeter um, nozzle. So, and increasing flow and um, possibly having to increase the temperature to compensate for the additional material and maybe adjusting layer height and so forth to try to increase the speed of making these parts. And every chance I get, I'm going to be trying to experiment with some of these things but uh, at this point, I don't have a lot of time allotted to experimenting. I have to focus on getting uh, things ready to get this product to market. But I will be experimenting. I appreciate those comments. And uh, believe me, I would love nothing more than to be able to produce twice as many parts in the same amount of time. And. Uh, provided I can maintain the quality and the strength and so forth. Uh, another comment I had was uh, recently uh, have I looked at uh, belt printers? Well, no, I hadn't really, but I've been looking a little closer. I've done a lot of research, looked at a lot of videos and everything on the Creality, what is it, CR30 belt printer and uh, for around a thousand dollars it sounds like like it's a great idea especially if you have parts that need to have an infinite uh, uh, y-axis and be able to prevent uh, print infinite lengths uh, currently i don't have any parts that require that but the other thing is you can print a part and then the belt will move on and then you can print another part and it just continues and the parts fall off the end of the belt. So you can print as long as you have filament. And that sounds good too. But from the videos I've seen, since it is such a new product, it's on Kickstarter, it's not readily available yet. There, there's still uh, changes being made uh, to the printer. It's a very different process printing at a 45 degree angle. So you have to uh, take that into consideration when uh, you're designing your parts. So I'm going to be um, curious, interested, looking at that, but I'm sure I'm not going to have a lot of time to uh, experiment with it but I'll definitely be watching everyone else that is and when they figure out a way to get that uh, machine to be productive I'll be ready to jump on board. In addition to all of the comments that I've had I found that there is a large number of people out there that are wanting to pursue um, a business or type of venture that involves 3D printing and uh, some people have expressed a concern about uh, making uh, some type of product similar to what I'm doing and selling that product making it with 3D printers so uh, that's in encouraging to know and there are also people out there that are considering using 3D printers as a service for their local area or community where they can provide uh, 3D printing services to those that don't have printers um, or that uh, don't have the time or money to get involved in doing the printing themselves. 
So I think there's a lot of potential there for that type of business and I encourage those people and wish them well in doing that. I think that uh, as the uh, this whole 3D printer evolution evolves that there will be more and more demand for that. <clears throat> it reminds me of back when the microprocessor technology came out in the mid 70s and I had to be a part of that. So I did get involved and started a business um, uh, with the microprocessors, microprocessor based computers. And uh, at that time, uh, most people thought that it was going to be reserved for uh, small businesses and uh, um, educational uh, situations and so forth that those would be the only people that would have the knowledge or the financial ability to uh, have a personal computer or microprocessor based computer and uh, my vision was different I believe that someday everybody would be using them um, I felt like with the modems and capabilities that you'd be able to take that computer and dial up JC Penney's or Sears and Roebuck, download their catalog, order something, pay for it uh, through your bank, which you could also link to with the computer. Um, I had no idea in the mid 70s that um, the internet was going to uh, evolve. and uh, that changed everything. Uh, if you could imagine, it would be a complicated system if everybody was using dial-up modems uh, to communicate. And um, but I knew somehow, some way, that that was going to happen, and that uh, computers were going to be in homes. And at least that's the feeling I had. It turned out different because of the internet but it, it did turn out that everybody has computers now or that technology almost so um, I see the same thing with 3d printing 3d printing is another emerging technology it's been around for a while but it's going to explode and any of you out there that are involved in it now I, I think you're in a good place because my vision is that um, in the near future, if you take your car to a garage to be worked on and they open the hood and find out that one of the linkage parts is broken on the carburetor, instead of ordering that part and waiting for it to come overnight and you having to leave your car, they'll be able to go to their computer, download a G-code file for that part, print it on their printer, and they'll have uh, metallic printers that will print and a, uh, uh, well, like they have today, they're very expensive, but they'll be economical. They'll be able to print that part, put it into a small induction um, oven, next to it, let it cure for a few minutes, and then take that out and put that part on the car, fix the carburetor, and those people will be on their way. Um, they're the same thing if you're at your home and your weed eater, the thing that screws down on the filament on the bottom of it, if it breaks, um, I see potentially that they could go online to the manufacturer download it may be 50 cents to download the g-code file for that part they can download it they can print that part put it back on their weed eater and be back out there weed eating uh, within 30 45 minutes or an hour uh, whatever it takes to download and print the, the part so um, there, there's just so much potential for the 3d printer that I see it being in businesses and I see it being in homes 
and being used um, for practical applications as well as personal and business. So uh, th those are my thoughts on 3D printing. Um, I felt like I wanted to share them. Whether I'll uh, actually post this part on a video or not, I don't know because sometimes uh, my thoughts are uh, a little radical for some people. But anyway, I thought I would uh, at least get that on tape and uh, consider posting it. So, if um, if there are any thoughts that that you have any questions you have leave them in a comment and I'm going to start as I go through and answer all of those comments um, I'll be taking notes of some of the interesting comments and uh, probably do a video every once in a while uh, responding to those because there are a lot of good questions and a lot of good suggestions uh, that are coming from uh, those comments. So if you're watching and if you're subscribed and commenting, I appreciate it very much. Keep them coming.